Day 15 of our isolation. That means it's over. But you know what? There's lineups everywhere you go, stand in the cold for three quarters of an hour to get in to buy your groceries. Nah, I'm just going to stay home. Well, we'll go get <laughs> one. Hey, you coughed. I know. You can't go outside. <laughs> Hallelujah, Jesus has risen from the dead. Amen. <laughs> and we have risen from our bed, no, from the house, and going out to get a few groceries. But first thing, this is the end of our quarantine, 14 days, day 15 now. First thing we have to do, which you always have to do, is make a first fruits offering. How about that? <laughs> do you do that? First fruits is absolutely amazing. It just releases the blessing of God over our lives like never before. So I am going to send uh, an offering to help people who are not in as good a position as we are. We are just so extremely blessed, almost feel guilty. Not really, I just basking in the love and the goodness of God. Amen, so we're going to Seniors Hour at Costco. Yeah, uh -huh. <laughs> there she is, right there. Number one, Mrs. Costco. But you know, it's just great to have this time. In the Gospel of John, after Jesus had been dealing with the Pharisees, they'd given such a hard time over healing that blind man that it says that he went away to the far side of the Jordan, beyond the Jordan, uh, to where John was first baptizing, and, says, and he stayed there. And something happened there where Jesus was not any longer on the front lines, but he was in this place where he could refocus. And uh, I don't know how you're doing through, through all of this, but to, for me, this is a tremendous time of refocusing, and honestly, we are so busy. Um, just as busy as we've ever been. And, and that's, that's more like an attitude or a habitual thing than it is a circumstantial thing. And, and I know there's people that are like bored and they don't know what to do and they're kind of like a fish out of water. But the fact is that we can now be beyond the Jordan where John was baptizing and we can stay there for a while, whether you like it or not. And, uh, and it, says, it says that people came to him and they were healed of their diseases. And then his disciples were there as well and he was teaching them. It's kind of like Jesus went into this um, retreat mode, but it wasn't a retreat mode. It was a building, rebuilding momentum mode. And so off the front lines, and, um, and we're still frontline ministry, of course, in prayer and in, in online stuff and that kind of thing. But at the same time, we'd, we'd, we don't have to go anywhere. Right now, I don't have to hassle with airplane tickets and reservations and all that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, I could just focus. And uh, it's a tremendous thing. And so it says that Jesus stayed, he stayed there for quite a while. And you know, then after that, Lazarus, remember Lazarus died. And, um, you know, the girls, his sisters said, you know, Jesus, you need to come and, uh, and heal our brother because he's sick. Well... Actually, he was already dead, <laughs> but Jesus said that he stayed there for two more days. He was in no hurry. You know that uh, this, this timing of God thing, don't get sucked into that. You're not waiting on the timing of God. We are here in this place building momentum and working on things that God wants us to work on right now. We're not waiting. And uh, in fact, in Acts chapter 1, Jesus' disciples asked him about that. They said, you know, Jesus, is this the time when God's going to do da, da, da? And Jesus turned to him and he rebuked him. He said, it is none of your business. The timing is none of Don't be one of those timing people. All timing is an excuse to not do anything. You're waiting for God to do your part as well as his part. And uh, just do what's in front of us. My goodness, we got amazing opportunity here to press in and refocus and, and you know, get revisioned, envisioned. And um, so, so Jesus said, it's none of your business, the timing of God, but, but you will go. You need to go. You will receive power after the Holy Spirit has come on you, and you're going to go into all the nations and make disciples of all those nations. And so that's the exciting part, is there is no, we're not waiting for a certain time. We're waiting for a certain momentum to build, and that belongs to us. That's under our jurisdiction. It's under our control that we can spend this time building the momentum in the Spirit, ministering to people as we can, and, uh, and refocusing and getting ready for the next big things that God has for, for us. And you know, they're going to be released, not according to a certain time, although God does know the time, but they're going to be released according to our readiness, according to the way we press through right now. Time to intercede. Time to refocus on the Word. Time to study. Man, I tell you what, I just get into the Bible and I find myself sitting there two hours later still study, studying the same passage of Scripture. That's like it was way back in the old days, you know. It's so exciting to be in that time of personal heart revival. Hey, well, God bless you. Anyway, isolation is going to continue uh, just because I love it. <laughs>